Today I want to discuss mechanism inversion and before I do that I want to show an application that you can use as available for the iPad and I believe also available for Android devices. It's made by Autodesk and um, it's called um, Force Effect Motion and I have it here installed um, and what it does for us it allows us to be able to create mechanisms and see their motion um, pretty quickly it's a free program um, some of you may be aware of it or have even used it and it's going to come in very handy in the discussion of mechanisms as you are as you can expect um, mechanisms are most meaningful when they're moving and when you can actually see their motion so we don't want to just be able to draw mechanisms but we want to be able to see them actually move and that is possible with this particular application so be again before we get into um, in linkage inversion we're going to first uh, show what we can do here in, in terms of drawing a, a particular mechanism we're going to focus first on the four bar slider crank and we got our linkage tool here on the left and you can see we have a pointer tool and a couple other tools here and so first I'm going to just kind of give myself a link and it's going to be called a B another link here a C and a third link here a D and for each of these I'm just simply using my finger to pull up the tool and then drag um, on the paper um, now with this is three links I want to go ahead and give myself um, a ground and a, an actual piston um, so we can have this four bar slider crank and so I'll use my ground tool and I'm gonna ground A and D so that link AD won't move and then I'm gonna come in focused on C because I really want C to remain on AD I want it to move back and forth on AD so I'm gonna highlight that hold it down my finger and I get some choices and one of my choices is to make C a sliding joint and I'm gonna pick that one and so now C slides back and forth along AD I'm gonna pick up a motor here on my left and place it on A and so now I'll be able to see this thing move see it kind of rotating there we see our crank a B we see our coupler BC and we see our actual sliding or prismatic joint there at C sliding back and forth along a D which is the ground link and so that's the motion that we have we'll go ahead and stop this and we can see now that we can pretty quickly go from an idea of the four bar slider crank to actually seeing the four bar slider again um, four bars because we have a crank a B we have a coupler BC, we have the piston C or the slider C, and then we have the ground link AD. Now, in terms of inversion, what we're talking about there is we're, we're creating a different mechanism simply by grounding a different link in the kinematic chain. Um, this particular mechanism has four links, and so there are four inversions. Every inversion might not necessarily look unique, um, nor will it necessarily have unique motion. I mean, in this particular case, for the four bar slider crank, all of its inversions are unique, are distinct. Each of their motions is different. And again, we do that simply by grounding a different um, link in that kinematic chain. So instead of AD, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight D and remove its um, ground point by hitting on the trash can here at the bottom left. And I'm going to take uh, ground and instead ground B. So now I've grounded link AB and now I'm going to watch the motion and see that it is indeed um, different from the motion that we had previously. So instead of C moving back and forth, now we have that slider block at C having complex motion as it goes slides back and forth and changes its orientation. So previously I, I drew all four of the inversions for the four bar slider crank and I'm going to go ahead and show those with the gallery here. Move back to where I drew those and let's zoom in here and focus on those. So the one that we'll see first here on the left is the one that I just drew. Um, the first one that I drew and this is the traditional slider block translates back and forth in this case along line AF. And then I have another one here where um, we have that complex motion of our slider block and here 
we actually ground the coupler in this case, so in, and the coupler is called IL in this particular um, drawing. And this in this particular case, the slider block rotates. And in our final inversion, we ground the slider block itself, it remains stationary, and the rest of the link uh, linkage, the, the rest of the links move. And so let's just slide back and kind of zoom out a little bit so we can see them all. And we're going to start some motion here. And so we can see that it got some interesting motions going on. See the one on the far left is the one we had first. Um, I think I can just zoom in while these are moving. Kind of see what's going on there. And you can see the second one, which we've already seen. Well, we have complex motion in the second one. And in the third case, where we have rotation of the slider block, kind of zoom in here so a little bit more so you can kind of see what's going on there. And so in this case, since we've grounded the coupler, we just have a rotation of the slider block as the crank moves and the original ground slides in and out. So our slider block stays put and just rotates. And then in our last case, Let's see what's going on there. We have all of our links rotating and the slider block stays there at the center uh, as it rotates around and turns around at that point. And so this is just an excellent tool to see all kinds of mechanisms and in this particular case the four uh, distinct inversions of the four bar slider crank. Um, we can also focus on inversions of other items, right? Well, anytime there's a linkage, we can ground a different link in the chain and get ourselves an inversion. Um, so for example, for our watt six bar linkage, there are two distinct inversions, even though there are six inversions, only two of them produce unique motions. And in the Stevenson six bar, um, there are uh, one additional, so there are three distinct inversions. And that's the conclusion of our discussion of inversion. Um, I just encourage you guys to, if you have the opportunity, to get a copy of this Autodesk um, Force Effect Motion. It will make uh, studying linkages and mechanisms much easier. Thanks.